G'day everyone, I'm Tim Thompson. I'm in the paddock today replacing some old sheep mesh with a brand new roll. And I've had a few requests from people about, you know, how do I strain up sheep mesh and all that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go through taking off the old sheep mesh, rolling it up safely. Um, and the difference then between hinge joint and ring lock, because uh, a lot of people will say ring lock and they mean sheep mesh. They're actually two choices um, and there's advantages and disadvantages with both. Once we've done all that, We'll roll out the new roll. I'll show you a few tips about rolling it out and setting it up. I'm gonna to do today's work with the minimum of equipment. I know there's a bit of stuff out there on how to strain up sheep mesh and people are using bulldozers and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, I'm gonna use these and about five tools. So let's get into it. Now, if you're like me, you like to reuse stuff. I'm not going to be throwing away this sheep mesh because you never know when it's going to come in handy. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try and cut this off the post with the minimum amount of wire loss. Now, some people would just hack away here and leave dags on the post. I don't like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the end knot right where it meets the horseshoe and I'm going to cut as close as I can to that horseshoe. That way I've only lost that little dag of wire. I like to reuse and repurpose materials as much as possible. Now one of my pet hates is when people loop the sheep mesh over the star picket. The star picket is not here to go through the sheep mesh. In fact, what'll happen is that that'll wear and pinch on the sheep mesh over time. And when it comes time to replacing the wire, oh, it's a massive pain in the butt. So never ever loop your sheep mesh over the star picket. Always clip it to the star picket. That way, you'll be able to take it off easily with a pair of pliers. You can imagine if there's six foot of weeds in here, how hard that job's gonna be. Now, I'm gonna roll this up. I'm also gonna roll up the old save wires with it. Leave the stay wires clipped onto it. Next time you run the fence out, you'll only need a few short bits of wire to get you going. Okay, so you're going into town and you're gonna buy sheep mesh. The first question you're gonna be asked is, do you want ring lock or do you want hinge joint? What's the difference? Well, this here, if you zoom in on this, this is hinge joint. And you can see the one thing it does is it hinges at the joint. So, your picket wires are not a single solid wire, they're little pieces of wire that have been wound around each of your line wires. So your line wires go along here and your picket wires go down the middle. Now, there's an advantage of that in cost. Hinge joint will usually be cheaper. There's a disadvantage in that if you're trying to keep in goats or whatever that are gonna test your fences, they're gonna bow your fences out pretty significantly in between posts over time because remember your line wires are mild steel they're not high tensile you're not going to get a huge strain on these guys so there's a bit of a disadvantage when you're looking at your hinge joint in that if you've got animals that are going to test it it's going to do this sort of stuff and it's going to bend and sway however if you're setting up your fence under a tree and you're worried about branches falling on your fence then hinge joint from a completely collapsed condition can be straightened up by hand in a matter of seconds and clip back onto your posts. So there's a huge advantage. It just depends where you're gonna put the fence. Okay, so that's enough with, hint, with uh, your hinge joint. Let's look at ring lock. If we zoom in on the ring lock here, you'll notice that your picket wires are attached to your line wires by a ring lock. It is what it says. Now, the main difference in structure here is that your picket wire is a solid piece of wire. So what's the advantage? The advantage is you'll be able to creep out your intermediate post spacing a little bit, save some money on putting in intermediate posts. Not a whole lot though, but there is a small advantage that way. The other advantage is if you've got goats or something like that that are gonna test against your fences, you've got a lot more rigidity in the upright portion of the fence. It's not gonna bow out as easily. And if it does, it's gonna to wanna to naturally bounce back. Um, it's not going to cantilever like the hinge joint did. However, if a branch falls on this, you'll be in the paddock trying to straighten a solid piece of wire and it'll never look the same again. So if you're running your fence out under trees, maybe consider hinge joint. 
If you want a little bit more strength and you want to creep your intermediate row spacings, consider ring lock. The other advantage is when it comes to putting ring lock on a fence post as opposed to putting hinge joint, I'll take ring lock every day because all I have to do is snip that ring on each joint and you pick it, your picket wire comes straight off. With hinge joint, you're constantly trying to take the little ferrules of wire off your, uh, your line wires with a pair of pliers all the time. Just doesn't quite work the same. Okay, so the first thing that I've done is I've run out a bottom ground wire off of this post. Now, the reason for starting at the bottom is twofold. The first thing you're doing is you're putting the initial strain on your new end assemblies on the bottom of the end assembly. So if the top moves a great deal when you put the initial strain on, you're not gonna lose tension on wires below. So always start straining new fences from the bottom. The other advantage about putting out a two and a half mil high tensile save wire along the bottom of your fence, aside from bedding in your new end assemblies that you've just constructed, is that you've got a line of sight now to put all of your star pickets up to. So walk along the sight wire, lifting it up and dropping it down against the ground just to make sure that it's not caught on any rocks or anything. You've got a perfectly straight wire. You can then start putting in your intermediary posts knowing that your fence is gonna be a perfectly straight line between the two end assemblies. Always be really careful with your star picket driver that you don't put your hands underneath it when you're coming down on top of the star picket because you can cut fingers off. I use one that is actually um, exactly the, the height that I want the star pickets to end up out of the ground. So when they hit the ground, I know I'm at exactly the right height all the way along the fence. Don't buy short ones. They save you money, but you could end up in hospital. So using our bottom wire here, we can get all of our posts exactly lined up, not having to use line of sight at all. Let go of the handles each time you put a post in, because otherwise you get blisters real quick. The ground. The other thing you'll note is that when I'm putting the star pickets in, I'm putting them in on the inside of the fence with the holes facing outward. A lot of people twist their star pickets in all sorts of different directions. These holes are meant to face the fence. When it comes time to rolling out your ring lock, there's a couple of things. The first is always start about a foot or so past the post. Uh, that'll give you enough line wire to tie off on the post without having to pull your wire up once it's run out. The second thing is with this hinge joint here, I'm just gonna weigh down the end so that it doesn't roll up on me as I'm rolling the fence out. So my star picket rammer comes in handy for that. The third thing, and the most important thing, is that hinge joint ring lock usually has a large spacing that's supposed to go to the top of your fence and a small spacing that's supposed to go to your bottom. So please, for the sake of everyone that looks at your fence for the next 20 years, and for the sake of your lambs that you wanna keep in the paddock, always put your short holes at the bottom of the fence, up against your fence posts when you're running out the wire, makes the job a lot easier, and it means that you won't have an upside down fence and lambs escaping for the next 20 or 30 years. So we've run our wire out, now what we have to do is cut off all of these picket wires. Because it's hinge joint, I'm gonna to have to make lots and lots of cuts. So I'm gonna grab a bucket. We're gonna speed this up or you get really bored. And I'm gonna cut off the first two panels of picket wires to give me enough wire to wrap around the post and tie an end knot on each and every one of my line wires. Some folk will simply wrap their line wires around the post and they say, oh, they're not holding a great deal of strain you can just wrap it round. To me, that's like putting a granny knot on a truck instead of a truckie's hitch. Um, finish your, net, your, your fences off properly. You should only ever have to build a fence once every 20 years. You shouldn't be coming back to repair it all the time because you took shortcuts where you built it. So do proper end knots 
Um, and if you need to know how to do an end knot, uh, click on the link up there somewhere that I'm putting on this video and it'll take you straight to how to do an end knot. We're going to quickly whip this up, tie it off to the post and get straining. Now there's going to be little bits of fiddly wire flying around so uh, on with the speed dealers and stay safe. And then give it a damn good yank and she should usually just come straight off. There'll be a few that'll try your patience. So this is probably the most frustrating part of the whole sheep mesh straining up business is putting these end knots on but it really does pay to do it properly from the start. Use your picket wires up against the post to keep your mesh even as you attach it to your top post and then when you strain it up evenly down the bottom you'll have an even tension on all of your line wires um, which is kind of important if you don't want your fence to bow out and you want it to stay looking good. Um, these are not high tensile mesh, these are mild steel so you will have to cut off your dags when you're doing your end knots but uh, yeah just try and keep everything neat and tidy at this end and it'll make your job a whole hell of a lot easier when it comes time to straining up. Now there you go, we're going to go down the other end, we're going to strain this up, we're going to attach it to the other post with a series of end knots as well, then we're going to come back up and we're going to, we're going to run out a 2.5 high tensile wire that's then going to be clipped to the top of the fence, the bottom wire is going to be clipped to the bottom and that will maintain my fence rigidity throughout years of service. Okay, so now there's all sorts of different variations that people use for straining up sheep mesh um, from a block of wood, which I don't recommend, um, all the way up to two sets of straining plates and gut strains and gripples and all sorts of complicated things. I'm going to try and do what I believe to be the most effective and safest way of doing this. I'm going to use one straining plate. You can buy these for about $180 thereabouts. Um, it comes in two pieces. You've got a piece of angled steel with tabs on it that jams into two pieces of round and then they're held together by a series of wedges that get hammered in. The idea is the wire is pinched between those two plates but not pinched on a sharp object and it's pinched between pretty heavy duty steel so that things can't go wrong. Remember when you're using your straining plate put the small part underneath your wire, put the large part part on top but make sure for goodness sakes don't do what I did the first time I used one of these things make sure that your straining brackets are pointing in the direction that you want to be pulling it because it's not much point than pointing the other way up the hill so we're going to start setting up our strainer plate for our fence now I'm making sure that my bottom lug is actually above the lowest wire of the fence you'll notice that my uh, short sections down the bottom closest to the fence my longest section which is going to be the top of the fence is the furthest away um, set it out so it's reasonably evenly spaced then we're going to put our strainer plate on the top of those lugs like so then we start putting our wedges in now the wedges have got a sloping section put that towards the top this lug stops them from going in too far just slide them in for now all the way along then like doing up a gasket start hitting in your wedges I like to do mine in an uneven pattern some of them will fall out as you go along don't be put off by that eventually you'll get it so tight that they all stay in rock solid now remember that the fence whilst it's being pinched it's under no worse a strain than it would be in the set of a, a jaws of a strainer and now we're set up and we're ready to go now if you only own one strainer that's fine connect your strainer to this central piece here and strain from that I'm fortunate in that I have over 
series of years, collected two strainers, so I'm going to be putting one on the top and one on the bottom lug, and that lets me adjust top and bottom wire tension so that I'm sure that this fence is tippy top evenly strained. Now there's a no-no when you're setting up your strainers. Some people will wrap their strainers around the fence like so and strain off your claw. That bends it and it doesn't work too well after that. So if you like your tools and you want them to last a while, don't use that to wrap around posts. The new ones all come with a clip as it is, a little hook as it is. The old ones don't. I used to use a D-shackle. Set your strainers up nice and high at the top. Put your D-shackle around the chain, like so, and secure it to your fence post. You're looking after your tools that way, and you want them to last a while because they're too expensive to buy new. So you'll see, all I've done now is I've attached my handles of my strainers to the straining plate. I've got my straining chain hooked off to the post with a clip. I can then walk the strainers up the chain. Quick tip, there's two ways you can set your strainers up. One with the handle against where you're putting the fence and the other one with the handle away. Always orient your strainers with the handle pointing towards the outside. Makes it much easier to take off. It's a beginner's tip, otherwise you'll be fumbling around inside the fence when you've tied off all your knots. That brings me to the next interesting question that I've been asked. How do you know if mesh fence is tight enough? Well, come in over here. Well, can you see those little crimps in your line wires? There's usually about two in every bay. The theory is you should take about three quarters of the crimp out of them and then you know you've tightened your fence up enough. You'll want a little bit of flexibility in your mesh so that an animal can hit it and bounce back off. You don't want to over tighten it. So don't take these completely out, take about three quarters of them out. So you can afford to crank this up pretty tight because it takes a lot of energy to get those crimps out of the netting. Once you think you've got it tight enough, it should spring back into place pretty darn readily. The next thing to do is take a walk up the fence and make sure that this stuff isn't caught on any of the posts because these picket wires are renowned for catching on anything. So I'm just going to walk the fence, then we're going to tie it up. Now comes that satisfying moment where we can come two panels past the end post and cut our line wires off our picket wire and start tying up at this end with end knots. Now you will lose a little bit of tension here um, with this tiny little slack bit of wire um, but in reality you'll probably only lose about one chain link of tension um, and that's not a whole lot of problem because, as I said before, there are these crimps in the netting that keep it pretty flexible anyway. And we've cranked it up real hard and removed those crinks, all but removed them. So there's a fair bit of give in that fence now. It's going to stay pretty much like a nice tight trampoline, which is basically what this wire is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a trampoline for your animals. Don't tell them that though, because they'll keep playing forever. All right, let's tie it up. I'm going to start tying in the middle and then I'm going to go either end from that and that'll give me a nice straight line. Now comes the intensely satisfying moment where you can let your strainers off and with only losing oh, about half a link of tension as you can see there Got the fence nicely strained up. Hit the wedges out. Oh, cut that bit. And the hardest part of the whole job is going to be taking this plate out from between your strain wires. Now let's go and have a look at what we've done. So 90% of the crimp 
in your line wires has been removed through the straining process and that fence is nice and tight a bit like piano wire now we're going to run out of top wire we're going to clip this non high tensile wire to the high tensile top wire that's going to give it long-term rigidity then we're going to run a couple of top wires in addition to that just to add a bit of height to the fence and we're done so now that we've strained up our sheep mesh it's time to put our top save wire on in this case i'm using two and a half mil high tensile wire clipped to the top and the bottom of your sheep mesh once again this is not a video about how to tie knots so if you want to know how to do the end knot please do use the link in the description to my video. There's a whole video just on doing the end knot. Um, it's probably the only knot that you must absolutely know if you're going to be doing fencing at any stage in your life. Um, it's really important to do it well. Don't forget, before you leave your end assembly, make sure you've cleaned up any little bits of fencing wire that are left over from tying your knots. You don't want your stock to snag on anything. Now all I have to do, strain up this wire, clip it onto my mesh, and secure everything onto the posts. So let's go do that. Now I have been asked, why don't I strain up the fence in the middle of the run? Why do I always come down to one end near the end assemblies? Well. It's really simple. Regardless of whether you're using a straining knot, or in my case, in, in this instance, a spiral fast, or some other means of joining the fence, whenever you add a join, you're introducing a weakness to the fence. Now I'm putting this under a fair amount of strain. So if this ever breaks, I don't want to replace half a fence of wire. If I put the end knot down near an end post, I've only got to replace a couple of meters of wire, a few cents worth of wire and I'm done again. And there we go, let's clip it on. Now those of you who know me from other videos will probably know that I'm a little bit adverse to spending money when I don't need to. But uh, I tell you what, one of the best investments I ever made in a tool was these clip pliers. They make your life just so much better. I know you can buy those little sort of, you know, $5 pliers that put individual clips that you have to feed into them. Um, don't even bother buying the darn things. These will save your life. I mean, how good is this? I'm gonna be clipping the whole fence up. I don't wanna waste my time. This is gonna let me go real quick. About 50 bucks, maybe $90, depending where you are. Best investment you'll ever make. While we're on the subject of clipping, I'm not sure I need to say it, but don't forget, clip the bottom of your fence to the bottom save wire as well. Don't forget that. Now I have said this in a video before, but I'm going to mention it again. 50 mil barbed staples are what you should be using to secure your wire to wooden posts. Make sure you get staples with the barb. When they go into the wood, they bite into the wood and they don't let the staple fall out. Staples on the ground, bad for your livestock. Having said that, don't hammer the staple straight up and down in the post, because what it'll do is it'll create a crack like that and the barbs won't work at all. Instead, put the staple in at about a 30 degree angle and the barbs will still bite into the post even if there's a crack present. Next is my pet hate and the pet hate of a lot of people that do fencing properly. Staples are not a straining device. Do not hammer them all the way into the wood and pinch the wire. If you use your staples to strain wire, I will find you. Learn how to do knots. If you use the staple to hold the wire against the post, not only will it slip over time, but you're also pinching the wire. If an animal hits that wire, it can't pull through the staple 
and even out the tension. Instead, it will pull on the pinch and break at the post every time. So only hammer your staples in about two thirds of the way, leave about that much out, let the wire slip through it. It's holding your wire up, it's not holding your wire tight. That's as far in as you'll ever need to put the staple. When that wire works on the post, the wire's got freedom of movement, the coating's not rubbed off the wire, and it's not pinched. Oh, and hey, another thing that's pretty important too, when you're stapling on all of your line wires, don't go across a picket wire. Only staple the line wires. That way, your fence can give and pull and not wreck it. Next job is the connection of your fencing wire to your star picket. Now you've got two options for that. You can buy the little clips from your local fencing supplier, spend a bit of money, or you can use these off cuts of your picket wire that you made earlier. You're gonna get 20 or 30 of them every time you build a fence, and you can use these guys as well and recycle and reuse. So let's go through how to do both. The clips, they make life really simple. To use your clips, all you have to do is thread your clip through the wire like so, use your twitcher, and twitch your clip around the wire. And this makes a very quick, very simple, easy operation. Always use three or four clips per post to keep your fence nice and tight on the posts. So the other option you've got is just to use a bit of your off-cut picket wire and you'll end up with 20 or 30 of these every time you build a fence. Simply bend a hook in it, put the hook through the hole, put one over the top, one underneath, into the right position, get your twitcher on there, and tie him up. It will take you a few extra seconds, but it does save you time going down the shops and buying the right clips, um, up to you. Still use three or four of these per post as well. So now all we have to do is run out our two top wires, same as we did our save wires. Remember to drive nice and slowly when you're running out your top wires. Same as before, staple your top wires to the fence posts, leaving plenty of wiggle room for it to move about. And just as before, use the last remaining holes on your star pickets to put your two top wires into place. I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you guys have a lot of fun setting up your new sheep mesh fencing. You know the difference between ring lock and hinge joint, and you've got a little bit more confidence in using some basic tools to do the job. Yes, you can use very complicated machinery and lots of accessories, but you'll find that four or five tools will get you out of trouble with this one. If you like this video, please don't forget, hit that little red button down there and subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference in helping me put out these videos. And in the meantime, take it easy while we've been uh, running out these wires. What do you reckon, girls? You come over to have a look, have you? Hello. How are you? Unfortunately, my sheep are too friendly.